Good morning, Starshine. The Earth says hello. It's Tom and Adam for a Friday morning. That's a nice quick week, isn't it? Happy Friday, Tom. It's nice when you have a Monday off. Oh yeah. And Monday off, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Can we make Monday off? Wasn't the same without you. I know it, it was better. Oh, see, I know you mean it. Get a haircut. No. Yeah. Some news. <laughs> We have the reason a WWE Raw star has been pulled from TV, some potential major changes coming to the WWE Network, and we'll be breaking down yesterday's WWE Quarter 4 conference call. We'll get to that in a little bit. One chap who has been conspicuous by their absence on Raw for a little while now is Rusev. He went from kind of being in the main event, the most watched feud in the history of the YouTubes, to like, nah, nowhere, mate. He's not been there. The focus has very much been on Liv Morgan and Lana, the two have had a couple of singles matches in the past two weeks on Raw. We have the reason that Rusev has been off of WWE TV, and it's quite simply due to a contractual dispute with the company. Now, Rusev's contract is believed to be expiring very, very soon, so I'm assuming that they don't want to put him on TV should he not re-sign. I really think Rusev's going to re-sign here. I just can't imagine him anywhere else. I think WWE... Like, it's been frustrating uh, for Rusev fans because he wasn't given the push and they didn't it, they didn't really get behind Rusev Day as much as they should have done. Like, mm -hmm. it was this massive thing, hugely over, great marketing potential, and they didn't really get into it, which was a real shame. Does it come to that old adage that they don't get behind something that they didn't create themselves? You think he just, he did it, he started doing it on social media, people started chanting it, and they didn't feel like it was there. I mean, that's a mm. foolish way of looking, oh, but it wouldn't surprise me, it wouldn't surprise me at all. It's very in-keeping, yeah, <laughs> to be fair. Do you see him popping up elsewhere? Um, the, the only play, right, okay, a lot of people go, hey, dub, hey, dub, hey, dub. you know where I think Rusev would be fun? Power, NWA power. I was about to say NWA yeah. power. I think he'd be really good NWA there as well. NWA power. Yeah. He'd just be a great fit but, there. I mean, they're not going to be able to offer him anywhere near the money that he's on with WWE, that's for no. sure. Uh, I just think it's pretty inevitable that he is going to re-sign, but I guess the financials haven't been quite worked out yet. Mm. He feels like a WWE guy, though. He does. Regardless he's, he's of the lack of real, like... He's had big Me moments, hasn't he? He does feel like a star, Rusev. I'll say that much. Yeah. I don't think he, he's not like a mega star or anything, but he feels like an important part of WWE TV. It's been quite nice that even when these Lana Liv Morgan matches are happening, people are still chanting Rusev Day, Rusev Day. They want to see him back. Yeah. I just don't want to see him back involved in the Bobby Lana style. What know. would you like to see him come back and do? So look across the Raw roster. Is there anybody that you think you'd see him matched up well against? Do you think, first of all, he's working as, he, we're keeping him as a face? Yeah, I, th yeah. I, I think it's pretty... I, I mean, you, you can turn him heel, but people are still going to chant. The, the, the great thing about Rusev is, like, he plays the sort of stereotypical foreign heel. He's played that well in the past. But I think we're past that. Mm. And now he's just such a charismatic guy. Like, his... His biggest quality, I think, is his charisma, his natural charisma and his ability to make an audience laugh. He's really, really good at that. So why not get behind that? That's the thing that I like about Rusev. It's not his matches. It's, it's that. It's his charisma. It's his charisma, it's kid. bags of charisma. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to see him involved in a mid-card title feud. I think there's a bit of building before if he ever gets up to the, the, the main event scene. I don't think that's happening anytime soon. But a mid-card title feud, I'd be awful. Rusev and Andrade when Andrade returns. I'd like that. I think that could be quite interesting, yeah. actually. Put that out into the universe. Let that happen. 9.99. Not my words, the words of somebody refusing ice cream in Germany. And the words of Vincent Kennedy McMahon when he announced the WWE Network, what feels like all those years ago. Some changes coming to the network. It's believed so. This follows some pretty bad news for WWE, which was revealed in yesterday's conference call covering quarter four of 2019, where we saw WWE Network subscriptions dropping by 10%, a pretty sizable drop there to 1.42 million. They are predicting a slight increase in quarter one of 2020, the quarter that we're in now, to 1.47 million. However, big changes are said to be coming. Now, various news outlets are reporting this as massive, massive changes where we're not going to get pay-per-views on the WWE Network anymore. Mm. I don't think that's what's happening. But let, let's talk about what was actually said. These changes are said to be transformative and 
it's essentially that WWE are now looking at showing pay-per-views on various other on-demand and live streaming services. So like they do here in the UK with BT Sport, you can purchase live WWE pay-per-views via BT Sport. They're looking at doing that in North America and other markets as well. I mean, it's dropping back kind of to the system that was there before, at least with pay-per-views. Uh, when the network came along, there was a, a considerable drop uh, in, in, in revenue for pay-per-view providers because everybody went, oh, I'm paying 9.99 a month, I'll just get the network, it's fine. Uh, but it looks as if the plans are to go back to that old model, but keep the network. And the, the concern there is that this might cause the network to drop even further. Possibly. I, I, I think it's more to do with the fact that they've got the ability to sell these elsewhere. So why not do the network and make some additional income? via various other platforms. Uh, it's the interim CFO, Frank Riddick, this, this is the guy that's taken over in the interim from Michelle Wilson and George Barrios. He is a very busy boy indeed, uh, saying essentially, yeah, they've got the rights to these shows, so why not explore other options? But people are jumping to conclusions as to this being WWE stop showing live pay-per-views on the network. They haven't given any indication of that at all. So don't believe that, because I, I, don't, I don't think that's what's happening. They've invested so much in the WWE network just not even in just like the the development of the platform itself but also the marketing of it WWE TV for a long time now has been centered around by the network by the network by the network I don't see them giving up on that anytime soon no and uh, they have said that a lot of these talks are in advanced stages already so chances are we're gonna know what the what the crack is in the next they couple said, of months. They said expect uh, an announcement regarding this in quarter one of this year so mm -hmm. in the next month and a half ish we're probably gonna hear that, hey, you'll be able to buy WWE pay-per-views here, here, here. And I think it makes sense. As long as they don't change that model of the WWE network too much, I think it's fine. That being said as well, I would still probably, if I, even if I didn't work here, I would still have the WWE network. Mm -hmm. Love me a little bit of world-class championship wrestling on a, on a quiet Saturday afternoon where I'm just on my own in my pants having a bit of a cry. Big fan. And I wanna see more of stuff like that, more of the classic legend, like the classic wrestling stuff, more the unique documentaries, like there's stuff in the news today on the podcast, in particular about a Ruthless Aggression documentary. Oh, it looks uh, great. That is coming out very soon. The network does this stuff really well. I wouldn't unsubscribe if they didn't show WrestleMania. But the big selling point for a lot of people is still the fact that you can watch live pay-per-views, yeah. either with a free trial, or for $9.99, which is a fraction of the cost that we've seen before. Some WrestleManias were selling for up to, up to $60, mm. and you can get it for $9.99, or if you're a new user, or somebody with two email accounts and two credit cards, for free. <laughs> I see you, I see you, <laughs> I see you on that one. Can we talk about the statistics, oh. Tom? Let's talk about the data. So we're gonna go through yesterday's quarter four conference call. So if you're not a particular fan of numbers and such, uh, and it just makes you fall asleep, stress not, because over here, Barry the Shark is going to be proofreading draft one of his self-help book, Unlocking the Mental Shark Cage. Yes, we've ordered new ink, by the way. Yes, we have. <laughs> um, have we? I don't know who keeps using up all the ink. So, I mean, Adam, go through all the numbers. Me and Barry are just going to be over here proofreading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel free. So, while Barry does his thing over there, I hate you so much. Barry? Let's talk some numbers, shall we? We've already broken down those network subscriptions, uh, dropping 10%. So let's get on to some key highlights. For 2019, yearly revenue, 960.4 million, a record high for WWE. Great news there. However, they lost out in some pretty key areas, which we will get to in a bit. Operating income at 116.5 million. Quarterly live event revenue was increased to 27.4 million, but was down from last year's 34 million. 0.4 million in the same uh, in the same quarter. The lack of a super show in Australia was blamed as well as fewer events generally. I and thought we'd can... see another one of there. Oh, it's the same here. Yeah. Same. I actually quite enjoyed that I show. Loved as it, well. Yeah. Uh, and I, I would expect to see that drop even further with the announcement that WWE are going to be running fewer live events, fewer house shows. Uh, Year over year, live event revenue fell to 125.6 million, which is down from 144.2 million. So once again, 56 fewer shows in the year, lower average attendance, and the lack of the Australian Super Show that we just talked about. Quarterly consumer product revenue increased to 30.8 million, but was once again down from last year's 32.8 million. And a big part of this is lower video game royalties. Ooh. And I wonder why that is. Obviously, what happened there? 
WWE 2K20 was a financial disaster for WWE this year. Their and figures I, for that literally glitched through the wall. It, <laughs> really bad, and understandably so. Truly understandably so. And you know what? I think they need a kick up the butt. Mm. With that, I really hope this year's game is different. If we do get one this year, we're almost definitely going to. They're not going to miss out on a year. I, everyone says that, hey, they would, it would be great if they could take a year away and really concentrate on the game. I expect Sadly, it's become a bit like X Factor, where it's like, no matter how bad it gets, we're still going to get one around Christmas time. Yeah, totally. The loss of Mixed Match Challenge on Facebook Watch, uh, which WWE were obviously pushing very heavily, contributed to a $7 million decrease in the other category for revenue. That doesn't necessarily mean that they were being paid exactly $7 million for for Facebook Watch's uh, Mixed Match Challenge, but it's certainly contributed. Yearly network revenue down, once again, 184.6 million. That was down from 199.3 million in 2018. But some other interesting mentions from the call itself. So, McMahon was grilled pretty heavily yesterday. Uh, over two key things. Firstly, uh, Wilson and Barrios leaving the company, and he's given the, the quote here. Oh, is, I love this quote is so ludicrous. much. This, this is, is so good. Right, when asked about how they were going to replace George Barrios and Michelle Wilson, McMahon has given the most management speech answer of all time. I think in terms of changing or reimagining our culture and the way we do business, it's going to be far more inclusive. Quite frankly, with that, our strong management team currently going forward, attracting world-class individuals to our company. Who wouldn't want to work for WWE? I mean, come on! It's exciting! Come on! <laughs> Meanwhile, the building burning down behind him. Everything's all right. You're not getting the cat excited! Uh, so, I mean, they're, they're just meaningless words there. <laughs> I, I've got a feeling that Vince McMahon was sweating when he said that quite a bit. Um, McMahon was asked if uh, AEW has changed anything for them. He said it hasn't, as WWE's focus remains on storylines and resolutions. Not His words, not mine. <laughs> not in that particular order. Uh, NXT continues to compete against them. Uh, this week, just as a note, uh, NXT were beaten in the ratings once again by AEW by a couple of hundred thousand. Um, and they were asked repeatedly again, this is the other point that Vince McMahon was really heavily grilled on, was the XFL. A lot of his time and energy is being spent in setting up the uh, XFL uh, ahead of its launch. I almost said NFL there, he wishes. Um, so McMahon was forced to reiterate several times that WWE and XFL are two separate entities. They're two separate companies. However, there is believed to be frustration in WWE from WWE staff and investors as well that Vince McMahon is really spending a lot of his time setting up the XFL and perhaps neglecting WWE a little more than he has done previously. Talent costs have increased as revenue increased uh, and they get a percentage and McMahon said that's something that they're quite proud of. So a nice note to finish on, talent making more money than ever. But that was kind of part of the uh, the issue with the, with the, with the president's leaving in the sense that the, the co-presidents wanted to WWE to make money whereas Vince was like well no I want to be competitive in the marketplace and I was like well you can't have both yeah <laughs> make money or don't we're off then bye bye but um yeah I think like there's lots to be down about in that but like we're going into WrestleMania quarter now. Yeah, I, so I mean, a lot of these numbers may just sort of naturally bump back up. Stocks have absolutely plummeted. I would suggest, and I'm no financial advisor at all, you but they do always yourself down. Sir. Yeah, so go and buy WWE stock now. No, I, I do think they'll bounce back. Yeah, especially with WrestleMania approaching. Time will tell for sure, but they're very low at the moment. I was thinking about spunking a hundred quid or something just Ooh. to see, just to have a little flutter. It's more fun than the bookies, isn't it? Have a little flutter. Makes me feel like a big boy as well. <laughs> Let's end on some happy news now, shall we? And we are getting set for the Impact Wrestling TNA Retro Show. There's no place like home. Oh. I can't bloody wait. This is the most excited that I've been about an Impact Wrestling <laughs> show for Same. quite a while, which is a very sad thing to say because it's all the old timers. Run down some of the names <laughs> that we can expect to see there. These are the confirmed names. Amazing Red. Bang. Flips. Former champ. Get flipping over in Florida. We've got Chris Saban, hail to you, former champion. Get yeah, over there. Great. Chris Harris. Knockly knock knock. America's most wanted. Gonna knock your brains out, Brainwalker. Get your coat on, get over there. Aces and eights. The best members of Aces and Eights. D'Lo Brown. Yeah, recognize him. Ken Anderson. Recognize a <laughs> microphone. Them boys, get your skins on, get on your bike, in you come. Scott Steiner. <laughs> big math, for that. Big old maths boy. He's fat. 
He's coming along too. Petey Williams, little no. pop pump. Canadian destroyer, great transition move. Get amongst it. We'll see you all in Tampa. See you all in Florida. He's <laughs> nailed it. He's absolutely nailed it. There's three more rumored names, courtesy oh. of the Wrestling Observer. Let's run these down. First of all, the voice of TNA for a long, long time. When I think of some of my favorite TNA moments, it's this guy's voice that I hear in my head, alongside Don West. But we're talking, of course, about Mike Tanay, a guy who doesn't get enough enough praise for his work as a commentator. Oh. He was brilliant in WCW. Quite often, it felt like he was maybe holding TNA together a little bit as far as commentary goes. I, I just love the guy. I think he was really good. Voice of my childhood, again. Yeah, well, it was, I loved how on the classic days of Nitro, when when actual wrestling had to be called, they just hoofed TNA into the commentary booth. Go on, call some moves, big old Mikey boy. Big old Mikey big, boy. That's, that's they called him back. He demanded to be called big old Mikey boy, I'll have you know. <laughs> Dixie Carter, of course, should be there. Expect yeah. to see an appearance from her. I mean, uh, obviously, she was TNA for an awful long time. Uh, and finally, it's everybody's favorite bro. It's not Matt Riddle. It's it's Vince Russo. Vince oh. Russo being rumored to be there. Obviously, Vince Russo was part of some pretty big TNA storylines back in day, for better or for worse. Sorry, excuse me. For, Are for, you for better or for that worse. The last rights match wasn't wasn't perfect. No, it was it was flawless. That it was absolutely <laughs> flawless. Um, so th there seems to be the idea. It's noted here that if they bring in Russo, it would stir up so much negativity that people would for sure know the date and the time of the show, and it would help business. Yeah, they're not wrong. Like people were. You know what? He's one person. I don't want to see there because I don't want him to have any more acknowledgement, any more recognition, any more publicity because he thrives on it and I don't want him to have any more money because the bloke's a knob end and he sh he he's irrelevant now. He used to, right, when we were doing the What Culture podcast, he used to play clips from the show and rag on us. Listen to these marks, bro! Listen to them! Like it's not our job to enjoy wrestling. Oh. Just because we actually enjoy it, Vince, You'd so, have, somebody's going to tweet, this to, somebody's gonna tweet this to him, so I, I don't care. Vince, you're a bell end. <laughs> you're a bell end, you're irrelevant. You have been for an awful long time. Uh, so, yeah, I, I hope you don't get booked for the TNA show. Have a you nice, probably will. Have a nice weekend. Yeah, have a nice weekend. Especially you, Vince Russo. Prick. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can pledge to us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.